We can argue with that so one. you became the king of Newark? God damn, I hope not. No, so no, definitely not the king of Newark. Just mm-hmm. like a very like a don. Yeah, like <laughs> like they would accept me now. Like they they would see and respect me for this. <laughs> that's such a that's such a funny thing to passively agree to. <laughs> I'll just write it, man. It yeah, I suppose I'm a Don. Um, Don never wears shorts. But to kind of set the stage here mm-hmm. throughout, like since turning pro, I've always had like a ridiculous story to go with just about all my preps or like just like a, a like just an ordinary. Um, and when you say uh, prep, you're like uh, prepping for your bodybuilder uh, show. Yeah, I apologize. So for people who want to know, like preparing for a show, the diet and all that stuff, like just the, the weeks leading into an event where I'm getting ready for it. So, like, because I think what some people don't realize is that the way professional bodybuilders look on stage, it's all, there's only a window of time in which they look like that. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and they have limited. to really dial in their diet mm-hmm. and their. And I, my understanding is that they're on stage, they're very dehydrated. Is that true? Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people certainly are. Uh, it, it just really goes. Like, however you go about it, like many people could have had like a liter or two or multiple liters of water the morning of before stepping on stage. And that'll affect the look and make them look drier in some instances. Um, but it, it is such like it is such like a uh, there's so many ways to go about it. Um, like for myself at one show, I was certainly not dehydrated, plenty of water, plenty of food the following week. However, I would consider myself being very dehydrated for or when I step on stage, just with how I manipulated water, using like over the counter lac- uh, not lac- um, diuretics mm-hmm. to earn, like to achieve that certain look. Because you're right, it, it's a very small window. You're on stage for a combined time on like a very large event, maybe like 10, 15 minutes, if that. Uh-huh. Like it's not a very long time. Typically, it, it's even half. Um, but the two shows I did had the better side of like 20 plus or minus people. So, yeah, you're on stage for just a little while longer. Um, so getting into that, there's always some odd stories on the 7th of September. I went to Florida the week leading up to it. I would end up actually losing a tooth. I was eating, which was, that's going to affect way in. It's going to affect way in. It's going to give me a little bit of an edge. And I just barely made it too, actually. So we, we could owe it to the tooth. Yeah. I was eating a frozen chocolate and all of a sudden, like I just bite, which I wasn't supposed to be doing, but I had like gone so off the rails at that point. Um, all of a sudden I just. A tooth just shattered in my mouth, split into three parts, and the root of it is actually still my gums at this moment as a space holder. So I'm just gonna kind of keep it in there. Yeah. Is it like anything goes on? It's obviously. in the back. It's one of the molars. Yeah, top left side. You, you can't see it unless I like fish hook my tooth right. there. So I got lucky for what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, not like a great story in itself, right? Like just a very like like odd occurrence. But the next week, when I had to fly out of Newark to go to Texas, so that week was rather difficult because when i went to florida i didn't have the um the placing i was hoping for uh the look was wonderful is it it the best i'd ever had like myself my coach and several others agreed with me um even the mc of the show thought i was supposed to be in the first call out but it's 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 a beauty pageant right so you go on stage you see what it is yes i could be very happy with my look and others can but if the head judge isn't approving of it then it doesn't matter right like it's it's i'm thrown to the side and forgotten about so typically you would or not to speak generally, but I'll speak about myself. Like the week of the show would be like lower carbs, like just rice, chicken, very clean things, mm-hmm. um, oats, stuff of that nature. The week leading up to the show on the 14th headed to Texas, my diet was chicken, chocolate, and laxatives. <laughs> like that was, I had just like given up all hope. I was like, I was so brought down in like every way by like, how that show in Florida went mm-hmm. that I was just like, fuck it. And I even wrote a, wrote an email, I think like Wednesday before the show to like pull out and ask the promoter, just be like, Hey, like I, I can't do this. But I was like, let me give it one more day. I'll wake up, see what my weight is. So fast forward Thursday morning, I made myself the Newark again, mind you chocolate, chicken, laxatives. Mm-hmm. Like that's the diet. It was fiber at night, laxatives at night, all this stuff. So everything is just like constantly moving on my body. And I'm constantly needing to use the restroom because of things that are just pushing out the, the over the counter diuretics. Like I'm just like, it's like chemical warfare as far as like getting to the show, which is the worst way to go about it. You never want to do it that way. Mm-hmm. So I am in my, uh, not superstitious, but like just like very relaxed clothing. I, I typically wear the same thing. Like just very like baggy, relaxed fit sweatpants, 
old ripped up sweatshirt. That was actually my dad's um, from when he was around. So like, just like a fun kind of thing. Keep me comfortable. Keep me warm. Keep the water moving. So mind you, like I look homeless. Like it's just a very homeless look, right? Setting the stage there. And then I have to use restrooms. It's like, okay, cool. Like not to be gross about this, but I usually have like a jug in the car just in case, God forbid, I have to do something. I'm like, all right, oh, there you go. So nature calls and I have to do that. But then the laxative knocks on my door and it's got to go and it's got to go everywhere. And it's not understanding that it has to wait. No, it's forcing itself out. So your prairie dogging. It's not. Yes. I'm not even going to like paint that picture. Yes. <laughs> um, Cause I have, I have to be mindful of people are going to watch this um, <laughs> off air, dude. I, I, we can go into it. So I, it, it's like balls out and it, it's like, I want to say it's like 80, maybe even 90 degrees. It was like the period we had like a really hot time in early September. Mm -hmm. I'm pouring sweat. I'm just like a homeless guy. I'm soaking wet because I'm sweating and anxiety and mm -hmm. I'm pacing around my car right now trying to figure out what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Cause I have to get on a bus to drive me to Newark. Cause I always park in like the economy lot mm -hmm. and I'm not going to make it. Like mm -hmm. I'm going to like, I'm going to lose a whole lot of weight real quick and I need to figure out where to put it. Yeah. I have a plastic, I have a paper bag. And there's no one around for what I can see. And I was like, I'm about to commit to like the most disgusting thing I've ever had to do in my life, which is probably the most like, like hygienic decision I could have made in Newark. Right. Given like what anyone <laughs> else. So, oh dude, I, I pulled down, sweat through, every, sweating through my clothes. I can see the stains coming out. I just go for it. And my soul started crying. Like I was like, I was already like at a low point. This brought me lower than low. So now I clean up, stand up. I'm walking to like the bus stop and there's a woman who happens to beat me there. And mind you, I am again, homeless looking guy, pouring sweat, oversized, torn up sweatshirt, luggage bag, and a full bag of shit and a paper bag in my other hand. And now this woman must have just been like horrified. As I'm like walking right up towards her, <laughs> dude, I was, I, I just given up hope at this point. Like, I just wanted to forget that they ever existed. I just walk up, I'm looking at her. I look at the trash can, throw it in. And it's like, it's no work, man. Like, is this the craziest thing she's ever seen in her right. life? Probably mm -hmm. not. Um, so that's my terrible story. And then after that, I make it to the airport and then I have to go into one of those crappy, like, um, I mean, they're kind of nice. Crappy like pop-up restrooms that they have in like Terminal B, if yeah. you've been to Newark recently. Mm -hmm. Just standing there, pants off, shirt on, <laughs> just cleaning my underwear, cleaning my clothes in the sink. <laughs> just what the fuck is my life right now? Like this is what I'm doing. The, all, this entire experience, <laughs> just so I can go stand on a stage in my underwear, spray tan oil, right. and just flex for some people. I don't know for like 20 minutes. <laughs> right? Like that, that's what it all comes down to. Um, that's, that's, it's such a great description of like expectation versus reality. 